seems that she may have, the Canadian girl may have fallen on her stick and uh, might just be a little winded right now. At least I hope that's all it is. She's walking off on her own volition. So that's that's a good sign. We'd hate to see him come down all the way down from Canada and then have to go back injured. Now they don't have any subs so I don't know what uh, what they're going to do in that situation. There's a free position shot on goal and the goalie put it right in her stick. Right in her stick. Okay, now there's a definite pass that Kirsten should have had, that goalie clear, she definitely should have had. Now, she should, she should have an option now. There's almost two players on her. Nobody cut to her. Everybody was doing a fadeaway. What, uh, what player is basically responsible for cutting to her in that, in that position? The third home should cut to her. She should cut out, cut out <laughs> wide to the, to the sideline, if you could call it that and then cut into her so she can see that she has a person to pass to. Kirsten also should have pulled wide and come down. Instead of coming straight down the center, she should have pulled wide. There was no one out to, the, to her left. Yeah, um, there was a lot of, lot of uh, clogging up in the middle. The whole point of lacrosse, it seems to create a space. If you can keep the middle open, then, you know, just about every, it's almost like a fast break in basketball. You take the ball to the middle, and then as soon as someone drops on you, feed it to either person on the side for a, for a quick shot. Uh, in that case, the defense, uh, a lot of people don't like to hear it, but they, they can play what's called a sagging defense. Okay, there goes number 44, which is the defense wing. Again, she goes down, and Kirsten Arner is still not picking her up. She's gotta, she has to start marking that defense wing if she's going to go down like that. All right, there was a nice stick check by Denise Ramundo. All right, now I see they're down over the hill, uh, which is a natural land hazard, and that's why the official blew the whistle. Now, no one had gained position here, so what are they, what are they doing now? How do they know who's going to get the ball? They're going to have a toss, and the official's going to toss the ball directly between the two of them, and the one that's more aggressive will usually get to the ball. Okay, I think she's calling an empty cross stick check there by the Canadians. All right, now here's Kirsten Arner standing completely free. So the pass should immediately, as she did, go to her. Kirsten pivots. Now there should be another pass right away. Uh, too much running with the ball. Uh, I believe uh, Gwen was in the center. Kirsten didn't see her in the center. And there goes the defense wing again to goal. All right now I see it's just a foot race to whoever gets to the ball first there. Little short pass between the Canadians. Canadians don't really seem to create too many spaces there. Uh, there was an attempt at a shovel shot. All right, nice ground pickup by Laura Oberholzer. Now she needs to pull her stick in a little bit. She's leaving it out there where it can easily be checked. All right, there was a bad pass. Uh, passing, see, the accuracy of passing seems to be uh, an, an important skill here. All right, we had a flag there. I believe that flag is probably because Heather Weikert, which is the defender on the Canadian girl, I believe that's number 33, Samantha Boyce. Uh, she had her stick up in her bubble. Was that right, Deb? She shouldn't have the stick up into the bubble. She should have it you know, away from the head. It never should the stick come close in contact with the head. All right, now, because of that defensive error, she got a free position right smack dab in front of goal, and every time, as you can see here, Samantha just scored. Um, Samantha has the same name as the coach. I wonder if they're related. We'll have to try and find that out later on. Okay, the horn that the fog horn that you hear from time to time is the sound for a substitution. I see starter Debbie Harbaugh is coming back in, and Gwen Roth is coming out. Narstown seems to have a pretty young team. I only see one senior out there. No, I take that back. Two seniors. The first home and the second home who started were seniors, and that was uh, Jeanette Diebold and uh, Janet Hagel. Both of those are seniors. But the rest of the team is comprised mostly of sophomores and juniors. 
All right, nice pickup. This defense wing is, is quite strong. That was a good. Now, see, she laid her stick out to the side, which enabled Kirsten Arner to check her from behind. Uh, the moment that she got past the person, she should have drawn her stick in front of her to protect it a little bit with her body. All right, we have Renee Greeby, sophomore, coming out, and Janet Hagel for Narstown going back in. All right, we have a we have a free position uh, for the Canadians. There's a loose ball, and it's first come first serve to that ball. All right, now I notice the pickups as well as uh, the the catching seems to be a little easier with those molded head sticks, and. Is some food for, food for thought for little kids. Maybe they should be starting out with molded head sticks to gain some uh, success and then switch to the wooden sticks to gain uh, less violence, I guess is, is the word I'm looking for here, for a lack of a word. All right, you see the yellow flag, and this is an eight-meter shot. She should score here. The goalie should step out. All right, nice catch by the goalie. All right now, the goalie has 10 seconds to clear. Now, I notice the goalie in that, oh, nice fadeaway to Debbie Harbaugh. Here's Janet Hague, who's wide open on this side. She should pivot, turn, and pass to Janet Hague, who's wide open. She's holding the ball. She should have passed. Lauren should have passed. All right, even though she scored, the best thing there in that situation, she had two free players. Janet Hagel, who was wide open, dead center in the middle, and Nina Farrell was out to the left. Both of them were wide open. Uh, a lot of times people ask, but well, why should she pass? Because she did have a defense player coming off on her, and those two girls were wide open closer to the goal. The girls will pick off. Like with, with Nina, when she was going down there, Janet, that just gives Janet you know, more people to draw to her. Nina was wide open and she just should have passed it sooner. All right, back to the center draw again. Let's see if Deb Harbaugh can get this draw this time. Nope, it goes to the Canadians again. All right, that defender, that right defense wing over there for Norristown should anticipate that ball coming to her every time and then just step in, maybe even slip her hand up a little bit and step in. All right, there's the center going down and taking a shot. Uh, Debbie Harbaugh fell asleep on that one and she should have picked her up. Many times the center doesn't go down uh, and if you can all of a sudden sneak in and sprint down the goal and receive a pass, it kind of throws off the other defender, which is a, a good tactic to do. But you try to keep your center high to keep a, a clear center area down the middle of the field and also to give your first, second, and third home some area to run. Sometimes the center will just hang back in between that in between the circle and the eight meter mark and she might wait for like the fifth or the fourth cut through that eight meter mark that'll give her a good opportunity to get a, to get the ball from one of her players okay there goes Nicole Sulin who had anticipated the draw like which is what we just said if she anticipated that draw then she would easily get the ball and she did oh Kirsten Arner just went for a check and it was too broad of a check and that's how her girl uh, quickly stepped in front of her. If she would make a smaller tapping motion with her check, she would have been much better off. All right, seems like Kirsten's having a little trouble here picking the ball up, looking for someone cutting to her. All right, she missed Janet Hagel here on the outside who was cutting to her and opted to go with a fadeaway. All right, there was a kick uh, by Norristown in the center of the field, but the officials uh, didn't see it. Are you allowed to kick the ball at all, Deb? No, you cannot kick the ball. Usually the official will call that and it'll go to the other team. Okay, people, that is uh, halftime. Now each team will get 10 minutes halftime, at which time the coaches will review uh, what they did wrong, what they're supposed to be doing, and we will be back in just a short time at the conclusion of that halftime. All right, here we are, ready to start the second half. The score after the first half is Norristown 4, and the Canadian team from Ajax Canada is 4, 9 to 4. That's the score, 9 to 4. Uh, Mr. Flynn, I have Mr. Flynn here, the athletic trainer from Norristown. Can you give us a report on the injured player? Yes, she took uh, the, the butt end of the stick into the, her midsection. 
and you always worry about an internal injury uh, after something like that. They also have a lot of heat uh, symptoms so far because they're coming from a much cooler climate at this uh, season of the year. They're coming from about 50 degrees right now and uh, obviously it's about 85 degrees a day. So it's a combination of the both right now. All right, physiologically, what are some of the problems uh, from coming such from such a cold degree of weather to to this hit? Even for our girls, our girls were pr playing uh, last week, and it was like 40 and 50 degrees. What are some yeah, of the exactly. physiological problems? Yeah, we we actually are similar, uh, but they have come directly without any chance to acclimatize themselves at all, and uh, that's basically the largest physiological difference is they are not able to acclimatize slowly to this uh, temperature. All right, will that, humidity. All right, will that, will that affect them in the long run as far as their endurance is concerned? Uh, most definitely. Whether that affects the score at the end of the game, I'm not sure, but it definitely will affect their abilities. All right, especially for uh, like Tiffany that who, who made those first two long runs, it's, it's good that the coach had subbed her. Thanks a lot, Mr. Flynn, and we thank look you. to we thank you for all your efforts and time running out there and helping all the girls. We appreciate it. This is a first for Norristown. Uh, Mr. Flynn has been working with us for the past two years, and it's nice having him out here. It's a relief to the coach to know that uh, they have someone that has some medical background. All right, we're ready to start, and there's the draw. Again, the Canadians have won the draw. Deb hasn't learned the secret yet of, of uh, how to beat the girl to that ball. Debbie, we haven't mentioned the officials for the game. Do you know who's officiating this game today? Yes, the two officials that are officiating today are Karen Maisie and Pam Sherry. Okay, I believe Karen is on the far side with the uh, with the reddish hair, and uh, Pam is on the side closest to the camera with the short dark hair. Uh, both very experienced players. All right, I look out on the field here. It looks like a real hodgepodge. It doesn't seem like uh, anyone's opened up a space or anything. There are a lot of players standing around. I think the heat is definitely going to take its toll this second half. All right, there was an interception by the Canadians and a good stop by the goalie. I think we've had a substitute here in goal. Yes, we have. That's Melanie Lupo that is in goal now. Uh, Melanie is a hockey goalie and she has not had a chance to play lacrosse that much. Uh, do you think there's much of a, a difference playing hockey goalie to lacrosse goalie, Deb? Well, there is some difference. Um, with lacrosse, the shots are more in the air. In hockey, they're more on the ground. But Melanie's pretty much, she's a very exper experienced goalie. She's really good in hockey. She's done the, um, the switch over to lacrosse very well. She's consistent. She knows who to pass it to. She's good with her, with her goalie clears. All right, there was a nice shot by Janet Hagel. Nice, long, low bounce shot by Janet Hagel. And they're the type of shots that are difficult to guard as far as uh, the goalkeeper is concerned uh, because you just don't know how it's going to come off the turf or something like that. The All right, we have a timeout here. Now, you notice this was... Uh, what we mentioned before, you can call a timeout. You only get one timeout a half, and it's for two minutes. Uh, one other thing about Melanie that I want to mention, uh, as a previous hockey goalkeeper and lacrosse goalkeeper, the major difference is learning to keep the ball in the crease. In hockey, uh, Many times you can do slide tackles to stop the ball and project the ball out to the side. Where in lacrosse, you don't want to do that. You want to keep the ball in the crease and prevent the ball from uh, rolling out to an attack player who will easily pick it up and just shoot right on you right away. Uh, also, you do have to throw the ball where in hockey all you have to do is clear it out of the circle and hopefully the defense will get it up the field. But in lacrosse you can create problems for yourself by just throwing the ball to the your opponent and then all of a sudden here they are right back in your face again. So it's very very important that the goalie works on stopping the ball, keeping it in the goal cage and then clearing it directly to the stick of her team. Okay, that two-minute timeout is over. Normally, they sound a warning sound at one minute and 45 seconds, and then another sound at the two minutes. If the team, if a team, not the team, if a team does not get out onto the field within, I believe it's 10 to 15 seconds after that, the official can award a free position to the other team, in which case that was not a problem here. They, they got out right away and started. All right, Deb's trying to figure out this draw. As you can see, she's still having a problem with it as far as uh, 
you know which way to stand which way to hold her stick and stuff like that so let's see if maybe she can anticipate that and get that draw all right, we say, all right, yeah, right, good point, Deb. All right, they're see now you can see they're facing in the opposite direction now, and uh, they switch center, so the center now is obviously in a different position. Okay, now, you can hear the official barely saying you can both both come on. She Because the ball went out of bounds, she is able to stay right on her the same distance apart as she was when the ball went out of bounds. Now, Norristown should be marking very closely and denying the ball. All right, there's a fatigue. You can see the color. You can see the color in her face. There's a definite fatigue factor that's going to happen here with this heat. All right, the cradling action. It, Deb, is, is it hard to cradle? I see a lot of the girls dropping the ball in the cradle. It's not really hard to cradle. It just takes practice. These girls, I know they just seem not to be giving with the ball when they go to catch it. They seem to be standing still and letting the ball hit the net part of their stick. You can't do that. You have to give with the catch. You've got to bend your knees and give. And I think that's where their major problem is right now. All right, I see the goalie made a nice move there. When a person goes across the goal cage like that, she stepped out to cut down the angle, which was a, which was a nice move. And I think that's probably Melanie's advantage over Amy because she is used to uh, looking at angles in hockey. All right. All right, there's two Norristown players that almost collided. They weren't talking to each other. All right, Beth should be looking to see where. All right, good pass to Janet Hagel. Janet should keep her head up, look for the free player. Look for the free player. All right, she, defense is forcing her wide, so we need someone to cut to her. We need a pivot here, and someone cut to her. All right, there was a player that was free. She didn't use her. She's going behind goal. All right, there's two Norristown girls crisscrossing. That was a good pattern. All right, and there's a third cut, and she's still not seeing her. The thing, she can she could stay back there all game, couldn't she, Deb? Sure, she could stand back there, but it's going to bring the defense down and give them more time to set up against our offense. Okay, a flag goes up. If she gets a shot off, all right, she didn't get a shot off. She she slowed down before the shot went off. I believe the score is 10 to 4 after that one goal that we had by Janet Hagel. Are right, we getting we Narsa's getting a free position here, I believe. No, I think she's I think I think she's calling a throw on. I think she's calling a throw on. Yeah, she is calling a throw on. I'm not certain as to why maybe it was a double foul. All right, neither player's got it, so All right, now someone from Canada. All right, now that was a loopy pass. It should be a little bit more direct. That way the defense doesn't have an opportunity to to set up. <laughs> All right, now here's two Norristown defenders, two Norristown defenders on the Canadian girl. Now, I, I see Debbie Harbaugh instantly after the whistle walk behind. Does she have to do that? Debbie knew she was wrong there. Um, when she went to make the stick check, she put the stick, her stick directly into the, def into the attack pl um, player's face, and she knew she was wrong. So immediately when she heard that whistle, she knew she had to go four meters behind her girl. Okay, four meters... Uh, my math is is failing me. I would I assume that's approximately somewhere around five yards. Uh, although I'm not certain. They 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 say it in meters and they just kind of eye it. They don't actually measure it out. All right, here we have Jeanette Diebel going in for a shot and a score. Jeanette Diebel. Jeanette's a senior, as I said before, who's going to Muhlenberg University. That makes the score now eleven for Norristown and four for Ajax. I had a chance to uh, talk with uh, one of the chaperones that's traveling with the uh, Canadian team from Ontario, Canada, and I understand that their coach, Barb Boys, is working with the uh, Canadian provincial teams in some of their conditioning programs. In Canada, as in the United States, their provincial teams uh, go together and they, are, they make selections from those provincial provincial teams for the Canadian national team. When I say provincial teams, teams from, say, Saskatchewan, uh, from Montreal, from Ontario, uh, British Columbia, and the various uh, provinces of Canada. Then they come together for like a, a tournament and then they select one national team that would go to the World Cup. 
The United States won the last World Cup. I believe it was in uh, 89 or 90. I'm not exactly. I think it's every four years, so I think it's 89. And the next World Cup will be in England in 1993. Uh, that is the best competition in the world. Teams from New Zealand, from Australia, from England, from the United States, from Canada. Lacrosse is getting more and more international. All right, I see here comes, all right, nice score. Deb, can you catch the number on that? 48, maybe. All right, we're trying to get a, a number on that. All right, we'll try to get a number on that so that we can see who that is. All right, um, let me get back to the World Cup team. The World Cup team is going to be selected. Uh, they'll, they'll probably make the selections in the United States as they do in Canada. In the United States, most of the areas, we don't have provincial teams. We have what are called club teams and associations. Uh, each area, we have the New England Association, we have the South Association, we have the Philadelphia Association, there's Midwest Association, there's even a group now out in Colorado. They all come together, as I said, at the national tournament, which I said is in, which is on Memorial Day weekend. I think we have an update on who had that score. Sharon Cook. All right, that was Sharon Cook, the defense wing again. All right, so that makes the score now 11 to 5. Okay, Jeanette Diebel on a score again. It makes it 12 to 5. All right, getting back to this national tournament tournament again for the third time. Uh, these associations all come together, and there's a selection committee made up of some of the top coaches in the nation, of college coaches in the nation, and they get together and select approximately 30 to 36 players to try out for this national team. And then the girls themselves, they're not funded by any organization whatsoever. The girls themselves then have to get the money together either as a team or as a group. Sometimes they'll get some, sometimes they'll get some funding from an outside group, but primarily the girls have to pay for themselves to go to the national tournament. Obviously, uh, in 1989, when uh, the United States went to Australia and won it. That was quite an expense. Quite an expense. All right, there's a lot of cuts being made uh, out here on the field that are being missed by players and uh, could be a fatigue problem. A lot of times it's just a lack of skill. Okay, we have uh, a visitor here from Canada. Would you give us your name? Yes, Brenda Lee. I'm a guidance counselor at Ajax High School, just accompanying the team. All right, Brenda, um, could you tell me how the girls uh, were chosen to, to come down here to the United States? Well, uh, basically, as you know, uh, lacrosse, even though it is an old Canadian game in many ways, is just developing uh, the girls' field lacrosse in uh, our area. And uh, our school has had the uh, sport for about four years now, um, but it's really in its infancy as far as development is concerned and uh, these girls are girls who have played for at least a couple of seasons um, and they play on the team that's called our varsity team. Now, uh, there are about 16 girls who would have been eligible to come, but um, as I was saying to you early, because of academics, uh, four chose not to, which um, left these four who, these uh, 12 who um, academically felt they could afford the time away to come, but they are, they would be on the rep team of our high school at home. Can you tell me approximately the size of Ajax High School? Ajax High School has a population of just under 1,600 this year. 1,600, well that's just about the size of Narstown High School. We had another score there, uh, giving the score now 13 to 5 Narstown. Uh, how long did it take you to get down from Canada? Uh, approximately 10 hours, a very comfortable trip um, in a very nice bus. I see you, you were, we were talking at halftime and you said you were traveling with uh, an, a boys team? Yes, uh, our boys baseball team 
uh, is accompanying us and uh, the two coaches planned this last fall. Well, that's great. Uh, I understand the most of the funding was uh, provided f uh, by the girls themselves. Um, yes, uh, each individual girl contributed uh, a significant amount and uh, they also did some fundraising. One of their uh, projects was kind of an interesting one. Uh, they collaborated with the town in an um, environmental activity that saw them out on a Sunday cleaning up public areas and uh, they had sponsors that sponsored them for a garbage bag to uh, and they, they raised a fair amount of funds that way and they had bingos and things of that sort to raise money as well. Bingos, that's, that's almost like an American pastime too. I'm glad to hear that they have bingo in Canada yeah, too. Bingo. All right. What do you What do you think of the game so far? What are your observations of the game? Well, as a, not a really true lacrosse person, um, I'm not as qualified as our coach would be to to discuss that. But um, I think this is our girls' absolute first game. They haven't had an exhibition game or anything else uh, this season. So uh, all in all, uh, I think they're looking very good uh, against a, a very fine Norristown team. A lot of competent players. Well, this is certainly a nice trip, and I'm glad that we were able to provide such nice weather for you. I realize that it is. We were talking to the athletic trainer earlier. We realize it's quite a temperature uh, difference for you. Approximately, what is the temperature up at uh, Ontario? Well, actually, uh, as we were leaving this past weekend, we had some lovely weather as well. Uh, Sunday was... Uh, not as warm as this, but uh, almost, and, uh, but that was unseasonably high. It was the highest temperature for that day um, in recorded uh, weather. But um, generally around now, um, uh, 10 Celsius would be um, an average weather for, uh, uh, temperature for this time of year. All right, 10 Celsius for us, we're in Fahrenheit, so that's probably somewhere around 50, 50, 55, maybe well, 60 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm probably exaggerating then because it's probably more in the 40s most of the time at this time okay. with the odd nicer day. Right, is there anything else that you would like to leave the Narstown community before we get back to the game? Um, simply that we can't, are just in awe of the wonderful hospitality that we've received and the tremendous cooperation and, and assistance in um, helping our, finding our way around even to uh, all other kinds of hospitality and it uh, seems to me it's typical of the great American spirit. Nice to see one of our players just score there. Yeah, sorry, that was... Yeah. Uh, Did you see the number? I, I didn't get it because I was... All right, no, I didn't, uh, we, but we will get back to you with who scored that. Uh, we're certainly glad that you could come down. This does give us a chance to showcase girls lacrosse, which is something that is truly building in the Philadelphia area, and as well as the uh, uh, Baltimore area and New England, which are very uh, popular areas. I believe it's the center. Number 45? Is that number oh, 45? Kim Leger, then. Kim Leger. Great. I was not pronouncing that correctly. I'm oh, glad Leger. I'm glad that you, you guys said Leger, right? Leger. Mm -hmm. I keep forgetting French. Yes. <laughs> French, right. Uh, we ha the, I understand the uh, girls' team has provided some refreshments for the Canadians before you move on. I understand you're moving on to Methacton High School? Yes, we are. Yes, we're going there. The girls are actually being billeted uh, in that area t tonight, and... Uh, then we're back to the hotel tomorrow night. But uh, once again, we can't thank you enough for the 